My favorite part about being on the road and traveling is obviously it's a tiny home, but you have the biggest yard of anybody there is. My name is Ben Harris, and this is my 1995 F350 four wheel drive ambulance that I've converted into my little tiny home. She doesn't really have a name. We just call her the big girl. So come on, step into the big girl. So I'm in the entryway. This doubles actually as a, as a shower. It's the only place I can stand up inside of this rig, unfortunately. Um, what it is, it's an old sink that I cut out to fit this space. And so underneath the mat here, there's a teak shower mat and then there's a drain that goes straight through and then up here just a sprayer so you can shower yourself off and there's a, a shower curtain that will magnet around the, the top but honestly i don't i've never used this one i always shower outside so it's just here i guess if i really need it i'll i'll start using it so this is my closet space these uh cabinets were already here in the ambulance again just kind of refaced them and took out some shelving so I could actually hang stuff in here. And then what I did is I lined them with aromatic cedar. Um, so it keeps them smelling fresh and keeps all the bugs out and anything they'll do out of there. And then there's more up top, which is just odds and ends, kind of a catch all for hats and gloves and stuff like that. Down below is my shoe storage. Um, and again, a lot of other odds and ends, my buddy heater for, you know, on colder nights. It's the only heat source I do have in here at the moment but it works really well because this thing is insulated better than anything I've ever had. So that works pretty well. When I first started looking around for rigs, ambulances in particular, I really wanted to, to have a pass through. A lot of them only have a little, small little window that you can maybe pass something through, but this one has a full door that slides open and closed. And so you can get from the cab into the back, you know? So if you do, it's late at night and you park into a spot where you don't want to be outside a lot and you just want to crawl in the back and jump in bed, you can. Um, and that's, like I said, it's pretty rare in an ambulance, especially the F series, the truck form. Um, but this one has a higher roof over the cab. So it access, I mean, it allowed the access to be able to get back and forth, which has been clutch. Um, this was a kind of a newer addition. I had this space that I didn't really have any use for. And so I just put up these hooks just to, you know, catch all for jackets and stuff, you know, a quick grab instead of throwing it in the closet every time and we can just hang whatever on this for that usually holds them pretty well. Um, and so that's been pretty nice. So this is obviously my food prep area, um, my sink, cooktop, and all my storage for all my food and everything like that, as well as the switches for lights. Um, these cabinets actually came with the ambulance. I just kind of repurposed them and made them a little bit more homey and less medical. And But they work really well. Everything slides clean, stays closed. Uh, they work really, really well. The garbage chute. You know, I have access to this outside compartment here so I can toss garbage out there and never have anything stinking up the inside, which is always nice. And then there's a door on the outside that opens so I can get the garbage in and out without any problems, as well as access my propane tank that's down in there. So this is a really kind of important little cubby that's back here, which has been really nice. Uh, this wood, wood top with a countertop, it's actually an acacia hardwood. It, uh, it works pretty well. I'm not thrilled with it, but it, it does the job. Um, and then the sink, well, I saw, you know, cut out that comes out using the cutting board and then it accesses my sink. And that slides right back in there and fits pretty well, usually. So the stove top, it's just a real basic Flame King. I don't remember exactly what I paid for it or anything, but it's just run off of propane. Um, again, it can access the propane from the outside here, so I don't ever have to worry about these getting hit and left on and running propane in here at all times so I can turn the main tank off there. And I don't do a lot of cooking in here because I do most of my cooking outside, but um, on colder days or in areas where I can't cook outside, it does you know, serve a pretty nice purpose and it's nice to be able to do it inside as well. All right, and then down here, um, again, just some sliding doors that just kind of houses the main cooking things I use, pots and pans and plates and, and cups and stuff like that. So it's more for food storage. Again, these cabinets came and these doors on these hydraulic little uh, drives were already here. So um, they work incredibly well. They stay open both sides and then they come down and they close. I've never had any issues of those opening up, anything coming out. Um, again, with the ambulance already built so well, there's there's there was no reason for me to change anything or to try to build it myself because there's no way I could build this as well as it was already done. This space down here is obviously just more counter space. Um, but not only that, 
there's a lot on here, so I can't really do it at the moment, but it does hinge up and it comes all the way and it locks under here. And then this turns into another seat with a seat belt. Um, so, you know, if you had a couple people in here, it's really easy to, you know, convert some spaces and have a lot of seating and to entertain really in this small area. It's been really nice. So this little divider here, um, it's kind of a unique little piece, just gives some division between my bed space, my sleeping space and the kitchen space. Um, it was actually a piece of walnut that I found in the trash at a bar that I was bartending at and they were just throwing it out. And so what I did is I got it and I ripped it down and turned it into this little ladder divider thing. And it really, like I said, it adds to the space. And again, that separation makes it feel a little bit more like, you know, a home rather than just one big open van space. The space underneath the bed, um, there's tons of it. And which is nice with the fixed bed, it allowed me to really securely have everything in place. Um, the refrigerator actually is, this side it slides all the way out you know and it opens up it's dometic i think 35 whatever their names are but it things it's great it's one of the best things or the best investment i would had you know compared to a cooler with ice this thing is worth its weight for sure um and then it doubles as a seat so when it comes out you can easily sit here and then you have the seat there and then the table slides out and this countertop as well matches this one. It was, like I said, it was all one big piece. So it all flows through the whole, through the whole rig. I could sit on there and it wouldn't, there'd be no issues. I think I left like 12 inches on the back of this thing so that you could, you know, really put some force on it. And this, the bed frame's all metal, so it's not going anywhere. So on this side opposite the fridge is just storage underneath the bed. Um, and it goes all the way back to the back doors. So there's ton, tons of storage back here. I got my paddleboard, a skateboard, backpacks, and then it goes up underneath that way as well. So it's, it's, it's incredible how much storage is actually in here. I could easily tuck a bike under there. Unfortunately, I don't have my bike with me right now, um, but it does fit. So these handles, they're actually leather. I got them from a, um, a boot maker in Montana uh, and they were just scrap leather. He let me have them. And it really kind of tied all this together. I think it really turned out pretty well. Because I wanted a fixed bed, I guess one of the requirements that I wanted was to be able to sit up and I can just barely sit up, which is nice because obviously, like I said, I can't stand up in here. But to be able to sit up and sit up straight in bed has been really nice. One of my older brothers, he's a metal fabricator. And so he helped me build a frame that fit in this space. And so we got a couple metal pieces that come through so the thing is super sturdy there's no rattling there's no nothing that shakes or anything when i'm driving down the road the thing is built solid and then there's some plywood that kind of runs through that slotted so i don't you know allow some airflow through there so i don't get any uh, mold or mildew issues um, and this this little corner back here used to come all the way out but i had to cut into that that's one of the outside storage containers it's the only one I actually had cut and manipulated in any way. And it was just so I could fit the bed. This is a full size mattress. And you can see, I still have a full foot of space at the foot of the bed, you know, for other clothes and stuff. But I think it's seven foot three from wall to wall in this thing, which is pretty great for a, a van. Where the lights are is where the, the ambulance lights used to be. And so the wiring was already there. And so instead of having those big, huge, um, power draining lights that got really hot. I just used that same wiring and popped in the LEDs and they, they've been working way better than those other ones. They don't draw any power uh, between them and the refrigerator. It's the only power I really use in here. Never had an issue with drawing it too much. So the ceiling, it's tongue and groove cedar. Um, and it really kind of tied everything together between the wood and the white and everything and accents well. All right, I got more cabinets over here. Again, from the ambulance. There's no reason for me to take them out. I, they're built way better than I could have done. And it just houses all sorts of random stuff. My art supplies, you know, when I'm camped out in the middle of nowhere, instead of watching movies or something, I do like to paint or draw. And then just some books. Um, and then this is just kind of a, a junk drawer, if you will, of just random things that I toss in there that I can access quickly. So this little bench seat here used to continue, or used to go from the front all the way to the back. Um, but I cut it down, obviously, when I put the bed in, but I did leave this little part. And it's more storage. It's pretty much just turned into my dirty laundry bin. Um, but it's it's been nice. And then also it's obviously the seat 
with a seatbelt again, so you can have a, a passenger le legally sit there. So it's been it's been really nice. I've always traveled a lot, like I, like I said, and I've spent a lot of time on boats where you you, you know you're very limited on things that you that you can have or that you should have or that you need to have. It really makes things you know that are important or that should be important important to you. You know you, the things that you have in here are the things that you want and you, you absolutely need. I really like that kind of simple lifestyle. The more things you have, the more problems you have, as far as I'm concerned. So, so everything that I own is pretty much in this rig right now. So a big selling point for, for the ambulance and why I wanted one was the outside storage. Um, instead of trying to pile everything on the inside, these things are already built with all these locking storage compartments. This one actually does access my closet space. And so you can access it from the inside or the outside. But down here is a little bit of extra space that you can only access from this door. And this is where I just pretty much keep all my camping gear. I have this one here, which for the most part is just my tools um, and other you know, ropes and jumper cables and stuff like that. I have a hatchet that I've mounted on the door here, you know, for firewood and camping and whatever else. So this, this bike is kind of a newer addition to, to the whole ambulance build. Um, this is a TW200, you know, it's a small little bike, but the thing is, it's great. It goes anywhere and it's street legal, so I can take it anywhere I want to pretty much. Um, and the reason I have it is so if I want to get to a trailhead that's down a smaller little dirt track or something that the ambulance, you know, it doesn't make sense to try to squeeze it down a road. I can drop the bike and that gets me pretty much anywhere I need to go. This side has even more storage than the other side. Um, as you can see, these, this big compartment, this is the reason that the bed sits about as high as it does. Um, but it has so much stuff. There's my spare tire. This actually turns into my outdoor kitchen um, as tables, you know, a little Coleman cooker. Um, and then as we move forward this is pretty much my water storage for the most part um, this is a 16 gallon water tank just all fresh water and then it just drains into a six gallon gray water um, and then i do have a couple backup eight gallon or seven, seven or eight gallon tanks that if i ever run out of here i can fill it up with those so i have 30 gallons of fresh water total so this front compartment is really kind of it houses a lot of the brains of the whole build um, i have the hot water heater um, instant hot water heater for my showers uh, as well as this is where the garbage comes through into the garbage chute and so I can access and, and you know take the garbage and throw it into dumpsters I never have to do deal with garbage on the inside at all it's all through this door um, as well as my propane tank that's in there that I can access from the front um, and then extra water storage and then just some random random other things that just happen to fit in there so when this was used as an ambulance, so I had to keep the truck running to operate all these different things that they were able to plug into the ambulance. So in order to use all those things without draining the battery, they could turn up the RPMs on here so it would rev at a higher level so that alternator would keep those batteries charged. They could use all those things. Um, and now it's just in the way and I hit my head on it when I go back and forth. So that's pretty much all I use this for. It did have a lot more controls and switches and stuff up here is huge big monster ugly you know 90s control platform but i cut all that out just kept the necessities um like my pa system <laughs> and the lights and you know random other things that are on here so one of the biggest um i guess additions i made to to the, the whole build was putting solar on the roof so on the roof there's 300 watts of of solar panels that actually sit between two um, racks again that my brother built for me that go along the side so there's no holes in the ceiling so there's no potential future leaks that come through which is was great you know so those those solar panels like i said they sit up there come through where the old light bar used to be through this compartment and then down into my battery bank which is here which is two six volt golf cart batteries wired in series to make one big 12 volt battery um, and it's, I, th I believe it's 230 amp hour. Um, and they work very, very well. I, I haven't run low on, on power at all, you know, between the refrigerator and the lights. Yeah, more than enough for me. I've been very fortunate in terms of, you know, my lifestyle and, and because I do live so simply, I, d I don't necessarily have to be working at the moment. When I was younger, I made some very good investments um, that I've been able to live off of as well as, you know, when I do need to work or I feel like I should work, I am a licensed boat captain, so I do work and you know run boats. I when I was in Alaska, I was running a fishing charter up there, um, and then I'm a bartender, so I can I'm easily able to pick up work anywhere doing that. 
Um, and then carpentry, you know, I was able to build this whole thing out. So I'll, I'll lend a hand and my brother, he's a general contractor. So anytime I'm back home and he needs a hand, I'll jump in and help him, you know, do a roof or something with him or remodel a kitchen or anything along those lines. So in terms of work, I'm pretty fortunate in, in, in that regard so that I can live this lifestyle without having to think about where I'm going to, you know, make my next buck. So all in for the price of this build and the truck itself um the, the truck itself being four-wheel drive and being with low miles did cost me a little bit more than other ambulance you might find out there so it cost me nine grand for the truck and then i only put about i think be around three maybe four grand into it so all in i'm like 13 grand on this whole build you know for a four-wheel drive pretty stout little truck um, compared to like a mercedes sprinter or anything like that i think 13 grand is is pretty pretty nice so and the reason i was able to save so much money on this build is because everything that's in here i did pretty much myself i did have a little bit of help from some friends and a girl i was dating at the time um, with some paint and she helped me take all the decals off on the side which is actually a lot of help I, my brother did give me a hand in, in terms of metal work uh, a little bit of help with electrical work a friend of mine who's an electrician just to you know try to you know get it so i don't burn the place down um, so, but beyond that, it was pretty much all done by me. The design, the layout, um, all the, you know, the woodworking and everything like that was, was all done by myself, which definitely helped with cost for sure. Thanks for watching. Um, if you enjoyed this tour of my tiny home, feel free to follow me along. I'm on Instagram at Adventure Ambo. And um, yeah, I'll try to post stuff so you can see my adventures from there. Thanks.